Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing a squid dissection together. Um, I bought this squid today at um, a bait shop, it's a common market squid, and this is in the Phyla mollusca class cephalopoda, and cephalopoda means head foot. So one of the big reasons why they call them head foots is because their head, which is right here, and their foot, or their modified foot, which are their arms and tentacles, are all attached as one unit. Um, this squid, to first start out with your directionality, um, the arms side of the squid is called the anterior side, and then the opposite of anterior is posterior, and so I remember a posterior point. Okay, both start with a P, and then anterior arms, both start with an A. The side of the squid that we are looking at right now is the ventral side or the belly side that is pointing down into the ocean. Um, the other side, if I flip the whole entire squid over, is the dorsal side and hopefully you notice some difference in the color of this squid the dorsal side is darker so this is an example of counter shading because it's an open ocean type of squid um, it does have really awesome um, abilities to camouflage itself but like all open ocean organisms that you know about they are counter shaded where they are darker on the dorsal side to blend in with a deeper ocean and they are lighter on the ventral side to blend in with the sun if a predator is looking from above um, also talking about the camouflage, all of these dots, those are one of the most amazing things of class cephalopoda are the chromatophores. And these chromatophores are all these individual little dots are these pigmented cells. They extend on the whole entire body and they also extend um, on this siphon right here and they extend down through all the arms and all the tentacles. Your chromatophores have the ability to expand and contract, kind of like our pupil. And so if you look over on this side on the big body area, you'll notice that some of the chromatophores are bigger and some are smaller. And so the chromatophores that are bigger, the muscles for each individual cell is actually being pulled and spread it apart or dilated, and that allows the squid to get a little bit darker. If the chromatophore is a tiny dot, um, it is the muscles have loosened and it makes the squid a little bit lighter of colors. They usually have three different colored chromatophore layers, so they can really have the ability to change into whatever color they need to to match their environment, which is pretty amazing. All right, so external portions of our squid. Right here, we all know these are arms, okay? And squids are considered decapods, deca referring to 10 and pod referring to foot. So what that means is they have 10 different appendages. Um, they have eight arms, the arms are the shorter ones. They have eight equal length arms and they have two longer tentacles. So besides the difference of length, um, the arms have suction cups along the whole entire interior side of the arm. And if we were able to get closer, which I don't think we are, because this is a pretty small squid, every single suction cup is actually on a stalk. And inside each suction cup is a ring of chitinous teeth. So if you can picture, um, I don't know, a, a picture of, of, of a sperm whale with these circular scars on it, um, the sperm whale does battle with these giant squid and these giant squid have these chitinous ring of teeth inside of each sucker holding on so it doesn't get eaten. So every single one of these uh, suction cups has a ring of chitinous teeth along the whole entire lining of the arm. And then your tentacles, tentacles are longer, they have two of them. The tentacles only have suction cups at the very, very tips of them. So that's another difference of the arms versus tentacles. Um, male squids have one extended appendage that helps transfer sperm to the female during mating. Um, but that is really the only way that you can tell male versus female for the external. Um, you have two eyes, okay? One eye is right here and the other eye is on this side. And um, squid or cephalopod eyes are very, very similar to human eyes. It's an example of convergent evolution. And what that means is that even though squid and, and humans or cephalopods and humans are not related to each other, we both evolved a similar characteristic um, through evolutionary changes and any evolutionary mechanisms. Um, they have a lens just like us, and I'll actually be removing it later. We have a hard lens in there. Um, and uh, they're able to see very, very well so they can match their environments. This structure right here is a siphon. This is where water gets shot out um, for a jet propulsion, how they could actually swim fast. And then moving up to this side of the body, this whole entire area right here is called the visceral mass or the mass of organs. This very thick structure that I'm putting my, th my finger into and I'll be cutting open is the mantle. The mantle for the squid is in charge of creating a water current um, for the gills. The gills are on the inside and it also is very muscular because it contracts and forces the water out. 
The mantle is also the main uh, skin, if you will, or the um, protection for the rest of the organs. Okay. If you eat calamari and you eat the rings, what they've done is they have sliced the mantle and it's chewy because this is a very, very muscular organ, so it helps with swimming. Um, these two triangular pieces right here are called the fins, and the fins are used for controlled swimming and also to act for steering like a rudder. So two ways that this squid will swim is they can very easily flap their fins and allow them for gentle controlled swimming or, uh, or hovering or turning, and then they could use their siphon for jet propulsion to get away quickly from, from a predator. All right, so we are going to um, cut into this squid, and the first thing that we are going to do is cut through the mantle so we can see the internal structures. So here we go. I will pinch the mantle like this. And the only reason why I'm pinching it is just to kind of pull the mantle up so it's away from the organs, okay? Fun fact, I'm using these dissection tools. These are my mom's dissection tools when she was in college. And it is her birthday today. So it seems appropriate. She's the one videotaping this. Hi, mom. Hey, guys. She was a marine biology major in college, so it kind of continued in with the family. All right, I'm very gently cutting all the way to the posterior or the pointed end of our squid. This squid was frozen, so I thawed it out, and we will see what the, uh, the movement is. All right, so there is our squid. This is just a little bit of tissue to allow things to sit together. All right, if you've ever gone fishing, this is amazing bait, okay? All right, so here we have the internal portions of the squid. Right here again is the siphon. If I went this way, you can see it opens up, okay? So the water, the mantle would compress and the water would just shoot out straight through the mantle and the, the squid would get away very quickly. But if you notice right above the mantle is this very silvery looking fish right here. This is not actually a fish, this is the ink sac. This is the ink sac and the ink, if you can guess it, the ink actually produces, the ink sac produces the ink and it shoots straight out through the siphon with the water and that is their, um, their way to conceal them getting away. These two things that I pull to the side are actually their gills. And if I were to cut off one of these gills and put them in water, you would see the gills expand and become really feathery looking. Um, that would increase their absorption or increase their surface area so they could absorb more gases because that's what gills and lungs are all about is breathing and, and absorbing oxygen and getting rid of the carbon dioxide. Um, this whole mass behind the ink sac is part of the digestive glands um, or what we call a cecum. And the cecum is just part of the digestive system. Um, this right here is called a nidamental gland and the only ones that have nidamental gland are your females. So this is a female. The nidamental gland um, purpose of it is to help produce the egg sac um, that holds the eggs. And these are also, this big structure right here is also part of the gonads. And like the, the yellowish structure right here is part of the digestive system as well. All right, one really cool fact that you may have learned from Finding Dory, the movie Finding Dory, is that squid and octopus have three hearts. And their hearts are not like our, our heart structures. They have um, three different hearts that do different things. They have two bronchial hearts. If you think of the word bronch, referring to like bronchitis, it's referring to lungs or gills. So they have two gills and they have two bronchial hearts. And when I say a heart, I don't think of a structure like ours. Do you see that white circular blob right there? That is actually one of the bronchial hearts. The other bronchial heart, if I move the nidomental gland to the side, is this other yellow blob-like structure that is a second bronchial heart. The purpose of these two bronchial hearts, since they are attached to the gill, is to take the blood that has been oxygenated at the gills and pass it to the third heart, which is like this pinkish triangular blob right in here in between the two bronchial hearts. This is called a systemic heart. The systemic heart is going to pump the oxygen-rich blood to the rest of the body. So it has two bronchial hearts, one bronchial heart each connected to each gill, and a systemic heart is pumping the body, the blood to the rest of the body. All right, so those are the main structures of the internal. Um, what I want us to do is to find the support structure. And the way that this is gonna happen is we're gonna actually remove the squid from its mantle. And so you take your fingers, and if you wanna do this on your own, go for it. You take your fingers, you grab the head like so, hold down here and we are pulling towards the posterior side, okay? This is going to expose something else on the squid, okay? 
Okay, so this is considered the Oregon Trail and the rest of the squid. We've got some gills that are left behind and their uh, respective bronchial hearts. What we have though is what I want to show you guys is the pen. And if I can get it without breaking it, this is the modified shell for squids. A lot of people think it's plastic. Okay, let me move this to the side so you can see it. All right, so that is the modified shell for squids. All cephalopods except for the Nautilus lost their shell. Um, and since they lost their shell, it allowed them to become faster. Um, their camouflage had to be much better, but they were not as protected. So the shell is the um, kind of like a backbone, if you will. It's not a backbone, but it's some type of a support structure for the squid. A lot of people, um, if you look at it, the point of it, it looks like the pen that we that people used to write with back in the day. So that's why it's called a pen. And you could actually break open the ink sac and dip the, dip the uh, pen into it and give yourself a nice little tattoo, but I won't be doing that today. All right, next I wanna show you guys the beak. So if I take the squid, I'm gonna make a squid flower. Now it's just everywhere. All right, inside, the arms is the feeding appendages, okay? Um, the mouth is right here, and there's actually a beak, like a bird beak, right in the center. Um, I'm going to, it's, the, this beak is just like a bird's beak, and there's two parts to it, and it is surrounded by a very strong mass of muscles called a buccal bulb. Buccal, if you know anatomy terms, refers to mouth or jaw. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually cut around the buccal bulb because when we remove or pull up on the buccal bulb, you will be able to see the esophagus. They have an esophagus just like us, and the esophagus leads straight to the stomach. All right, and get kind of in there. Give it a nice little squeeze, come on. Sometimes it works, sometimes it, aha, there it goes. All right, so you can see it's a circular buccal bulb, buccal mass, and that little tube, if I can grab it, that tube right there is the esophagus. And if you notice, if I pull up and down, notice that the rest of the squid is moving. Well, it's because everything is connected in the squid. All right, going back to the beak. Let me get my fingers not so slippery. Whoa! The beak is two parts, like I said. It's actually pretty huge. It's kind of like a uh, iceberg, where only the tip is extended out of the outside and everything else is inside. I pull it out. There's one. Oh, it kind of broke in half, actually. So there's one half. I'm having trouble getting this one out. All right, there it is. That's one half of the beak. Okay, you can see it's pretty huge. The other part of that beak side was right there. That was supposed to stay connected, but it didn't. All right, so the, the buccal bulb, this muscular mass, controls the movements of the beak and allows the squid to nicely chew its prey. Um, one last thing that I want to show you guys before we are done is the eye and the lens. I know you can't feel it, but right now I'm kind of feeling through the eye and I can feel this hard marble-like structure. That is the lens, just like in our eye. Woo! Popped like a cherry tomato. All right, where did that lens go? Here it comes. All right, we'll put it right next to there. Okay, that lens helps refocus images just like our lens does in our eye. Okay, the image just passes through it and bounces off the back. So it has evolved the same exact structure that we have, just obviously on a much smaller scale. All right, that is your squid dissection. Um, you can always do a squid dissection by yourself if you wanna go to a bait shop and buy some squid. It is pretty fun. Um, it's, it's, it's a little juicy and a little sticky, but now you can go fishing and have some good bait to catch some fish. Thanks for watching guys and have a great day. Bye.